Okay. And uh, I noticed that um, during our conversation today, you've mentioned uh, mentorship several yes. times. Um, how important is uh, mentorship as far as for development and um, uh, furthering your career? Mentorship is absolutely fundamental. Uh, it's one. There's two ideas about growth outside of school and other things. Finding a good mentor uh, that has expertise in the area you want to learn. So it isn't just someone older than you or somebody that you know, runs a big company. They actually have to have the knowledge and information ideas that you specifically want to learn. Uh, then number two with that part of it is you can never waste their time. There's two or three things. Uh, come prepared, have questions, know what you want to learn, tell them that, respect their time. And if they give you an assignment or advice, uh, take it and try it and then come back and report on it. Much like I said, char the, my mentor would give me a book, Make, I had to make a book report and then he would test to see if I was implementing what I was learning. That shows respect for your mentor. Another thing you do with your mentors, you want to give back to them. So find an area they're interested in, something they want to learn about. Uh, for me, it might be blockchain or uh, cryptocurrency or something like that I know nothing about. But the young, I was mentoring a young lady this morning. She knows a lot about that, so she was teaching me. She's 19 and I'm furiously taking notes trying to learn about cryptocurrency and, and blockchain. I also make another point there, if you're going to go to your mentor, bring a notepad, take notes, take it seriously. Now let's take it up from the mentor idea to one that's, that's even more powerful. Uh, one of the reasons I failed out of college on the first try is I didn't ask anybody for help. I thought I could do it all by myself, uh, showed up at class and failed. When I transferred to the community college Santa Fe where I went and then on to the University of Florida, first thing I did was start study groups in all my classes. And I would walk up to the front of the room on the first day and say, hey, I'm John, I'm going to start a study group. Uh, anybody wants to be in the study group, you're welcome. It's Tuesday and Thursday nights. And love to have you in the study group as long as you have a 3.6 GPA or higher. Uh, now, never, nobody ever asked me my GPA because I started the damn group. Uh, but the idea there was is I surrounded myself with really smart people. And, you know, I had, it started big. And by the time I went to graduate, I had a study group of about six or six of us. College became really easy. I only had to do a fifth of the work. You know, I was like, you read chapters one through five, you read six through 10, you go visit the TA, I'll go get the notes from somebody that took the class last year. We divided it up and we all, my last two years in college, set the curve in almost every class we were in. Fast forward to today, I'm uh, 54, I'll be 55 next month. I still have a study group. It's called a mastermind group. And the mastermind group is when you get some people in your community that are bright, sharp, smart, talented, high values, high integrity, and you get together, we get together about once every 45 days, we assign books, we assign homework, uh, and you come in and we push each other, we help each other. And if someone has a problem in their business, all the rest of us, there's about 18 of us, uh, get in and we help and we, we call people and we make things happen. So that mastermind group is something you can use for the rest of your life. When I graduated from college and got the first one, I started a mastermind group of CEOs under the age of 30. Then when I turned 31, it was under the age of 40, and now we just took the, the age thing out of it, and it's just a CEO group. So unbelievably powerful idea. Uh, so as far as um, mentorship and it being crucial, how would you, um, you suggest as far as going about choosing a mentor? Does the mentor choose the mentee, or is it vice versa? How does you have like a meeting of a minds to develop that relationship? Great question. Very, at least in my experience, very rarely does the mentor pick the mentee. Uh, every now and then someone will say, hey, you're really cool, smart, bright, you know, let's have breakfast together or lunch together or coffee together every now and then. But most of the time it's the mentee that seeks out the mentor. I mentioned earlier you want to find somebody who has the skills, abilities uh, that you're trying to learn, the knowledge, experience you're trying to learn from, respect their time, treat them great, and then put a, put a time frame on it, six months. And at six months, if you're still learning, ask them, can we go another six months? But when you've got to a point where you really feel like you've learned about as much as you can from that person, you say, I, I think I've got the main things that I asked you to teach me. I feel pretty good about it. Who are someone else you can introduce me to that you think might be able to help me? Or I'm really interested now in learning more about uh, human resources or marketing. Uh, do you know anyone in, in town that you think would be a great mentor for me in marketing? And every time you do that, you not only do you increase your network, but you get a, a direct introduction, referral from your mentor to one of their peers. Rarely does that person say no because their friend asked them to mentor you. So that's how you continue to get new mentors going forward.